Die in a foreign land, Exai Dao King, Empress of Emperor Di Song of the Song Dynasty. Exai Dao King, a native of Chiantai Zhejiang Province, was the Empress of Emperor Di Song of the Song Dynasty. Her grandfather, Exai Shenfu, had been a prime minister, and her father, Exai Kubo, was in charge of Xiantuquan in Jiangchen Prefecture and was an idol official. Exai Da King's fate as a child was brutal. She was born with a congenital corneal cataract in one eye and her skin was very dark. So naturally, she could not be considered a beautiful woman. Xie Daking's parents died early as a young girl, and her family's situation became very poor. Later, Xie Daoking was able to enter the palace because her grandfather, Xie Shenfu, when he was the prime minister, had helped the late Emperor Ningzang to appoint a queen. Out of gratitude to the Xie family, after the death of Ening Song, Yang, who was already the Empress Dowager, chose a queen for Emperor Li Zong from among the daughters of the Xie family. Since Xie Daoking was the only daughter of the Xie family who was not married then, her brothers planned to send her to the palace. Xie Daoking was unfortunate enough to get a rash on her way to the palace. But she did not expect that after she recovered from the disease, all her skin would fall off and her original dark skin would turn into a white skin like jade. The Xie family was pleased when they got the news and spent a lot of money to hire the best doctors to cure her congenital corneal opacity. From then on, although Xie Daoking could not be called a beautiful woman, she was no longer the ugly woman she had been. At that time, Xie Daoking was joined in the palace by the daughter of Jia Shibi, a vital court official, who was exceptionally beautiful. Emperor Li Zhang of Song naturally fell in love with Miss Jia at first sight. However, his mother, Empress Dowager Yang, objected, saying, The Xi family's young lady is dignified and blessed and is suitable to be the queen of the palace. The courtiers around him also whispered, If we don't have a real queen, do we have to have a fake one? Li Zong, forced by the pressure of many parties, no way, had to listen to the idea of the Empress Dowager. Began to seal Xi Dao King as Tonji County Lady in September 1-7, into the title of noble consort, and in December was named Empress. Xie Dao King, although the queen in front of the emperor, still needs to match the charming and beautiful Jia Guifei. Lai Zheng was a womanizer and always favored Jia Guifei alone. When Jia died, he fell in love with the young and beautiful Yan Guifei. Empress Xie was a peaceful woman who never cared who the Lai Zheng emperor favored, and she was content to remain empress as long as she could given her mediocre appearance. Seeing that the empress she chose was so tolerant and generous, Empress Dowager Yang treated her with great respect. Emperor Raizong, although he did not love her, was pleased that Xi Daoking knew herself and never complained in front of him, so he also respected her and treated her with great courtesy. At this time, Jia Saidao, the younger brother of Jia Guifei, rose to power because the emperor favored his sister. From 1234, in just a few years, he was successively promoted to the position of the field order. The Chancellor of the Imperial Household, the Supervisor of Military Weapons, and the Chancellor of the Great Zongjing, etc. Although Jiu Saidao was incompetent, he could not make a good living. Although Jiu Saidao had no virtue and no ability, because he was good at playing with power, his official position became bigger and bigger and the power of the government gradually fell into his hands. Emperor Li Zong was so obsessed with tenderness that he did not care about the affairs of the state. Zhao Saida seized this opportunity and took control of the dynasty of Song Dynasty, and he became a great power in the countryside for a while. After the Song Dynasty, united with the Mongols to destroy the Jin Dynasty in 1234, the Mongols began to take advantage of the situation, and soon reneged on their alliance and infringed on the south. They crossed the border, killing and robbing people in the territory of the Song dynasty, causing the people in the border cities to live in poverty, with corpses and bones all over the place. In 1258, Mongol Khan Munkul decided to mobilize three armies to start a full-scale war against the southern Song. In 1259, the Mongol armies met and surrounded Hezhou present-day Hechuan, Zhuqing. Soon after, the Yuan army was ready to cross the river. Upon receiving the military report, the timid emperor Li Zong hurriedly discussed moving the capital to Pingyuan or Qinjuan with his courtiers. 
When Empress Exai heard that the emperor wanted to move the capital, she immediately went to the palace and tried to stop him. She thought that moving the capital in such a situation would shake the people's hearts and make the situation even worse and unmanageable. It shows that Empress Exai still had some courage. Due to Exai taking strong opposition, Emperor Li did not move the capital. In July, the great Khan Ming was seriously ill. In September, Meng's younger brother, Kublai, led an army to besiege as you present day watching Hubei and prepared to attack Linin, the capital of the Song dynasty. At this point, Emperor Li Zong, who had been informed of the battle ahead, became alarmed and hurriedly ordered all the generals to send troops to rescue him. He also conferred on Jia Saidao the title of right prime minister and privy councillor. He ordered him to set up troops in Hanyang present-day Hanyang, Hubei province to assist the troops in issue in resisting the Mongol army. In November of that year, the Mongol army fiercely attacked the city of Ishu, and the Song army lost their troops due to Jia Saidao's lack of knowledge of how to lead and command an army, resulting in 13,000 dead and wounded in the city. At that time, Song General Jie Da arrived with reinforcements to fight against the Mongols and strengthen the defense, which saved Izhu for the time being. The left prime minister, Wu Qian, assessed the situation and ordered Jiu Saidao to move to Huangchao present-day Huanggang, a military stronghold downstream of Izhu, according to the needs of the war. However, Jiu Saidao was a complete coward and could not lead an army. On his way to Huangchao, he suddenly received a report that the front army had encountered Mongolian soldiers and was at a loss for words. Later, when he found that the other side is only a perversion of the Song dynasty, rebel general storage again exing rate of old and weak remnants of the army, only then again got up. At this time, Kublai Lai, one side rushed to attack Ishu, and one threatened to march to Linen. Jia Saidao got the news after the terrified. He secretly sent his subordinate Song Jing to the Mongols to beg for peace, but also put forward humiliating conditions, saying if the Mongolians agreed to retreat, he was willing to use the Yangtze River as a border, retreat to the south of the Yangtze River, and every year to the Mongols to offer the annual silver, brocade and other goods to 100,000 each. He said that if Mongolia agreed to retreat, he would retreat south of the Yangtze River and offer Mongolia to $100,000 of silver and brocade annually. At that time, Wang Jian, the defender of Hangzhou, reported that Meng was dead and the Mongolian army was panicking. Jia Saidao should have taken advantage of this opportunity to counterattack, but he cowardly sent Song Jing to beg for peace again. Kublai was planning to withdraw his army and return to Mongolia to fight for the throne of the Khan. Still, Jia Saidao took the initiative to send him to the door, so he took the opportunity to agree to the terms of the negotiation and went back to the north with his army with peace of mind. When Jiu Saidao saw the retreat of the Mongolian main force, he mobilized his army to intercept and kill more than 100 Mongolian soldiers, and then hid the matter of seeking peace with the Mongols and reported to the court falsely the great successes of all roads. The siege of Yi has been lifted, the river and Han have been cleaned up, and the clan society is in danger of recovering from being at peace again. And it is a rest for the ages without boundaries. The ignorant Emperor Li Zong knew nothing about the battle on the front line. And when he received the report, he thought that Jiu Saidao had had great success in defense of the Song dynasty. In March 1260, the emperor proclaimed to commend Jiu Saidao. In April, Li Zong promoted Jiu Saidao to the rank of junior master and appointed him as the Duke of Wei. Since the so-called great victory of Ishu, Emperor Raizong soon forgot about the national crisis. He indulged in a life of debauchery, ordering people to build luxurious palaces such as Hibiscus Pavilion and Shanglian Pavilion and to bring prostitutes into the palace to enjoy themselves day and night. Although Exai Daoqing was dissatisfied with the emperor's licentiousness, he could only pretend to disregard it not to jeopardize his throne. In October 1264, Emperor Li Zong died of illness due to overindulgence. Crown Prince Vao Gin succeeded to the throne with Jiu Saidao's support, which was the historical Ying Zong. In 1267, Di Yu Zong honored Exai Dao King as Empress Dowager with the title of Shu He Shengfu and three generations of titles. Her father, Exai Kubo, was named King of Wei. Her grandfather, Exai Shenfu, 
and her great grandfather, Exai Dingji, were also posthumously titled. Di Yu Zong and his father, weak, incompetent, and love of sex, relied on Jia Saidao and even honored Jia Saidao as the emperor's teacher. After only ten years as emperor, Ju Zong was also overindulged in wine and sex and suddenly died on the eighth day of the seventh month, only living to be 33 years old. Under Jia Saidao's manipulation, the four-year-old Zhao Xian was crowned Emperor Gong, and Exai Daoqing was immediately honored as Empress Dowager. Exai Daoqing was then honored as the Empress Dowager. The Empress Dowager Exai was already old and sickly, but because the Emperor was too young, her ministers repeatedly petitioned her for her to oversee the affairs of the Emperor. Exai Daoqing had no choice but to agree. In February of the same year, the Yuan army captured Shanzhong and Ishu in December. Numerous eunuchs and ministers sent a joint petition to Jia Saidao, asking him to supervise the army to fight against the Yuan personally. Although Jia Saidao was timid, he was forced by the situation to set up a governor's office in Linen and still did not dare to send troops. In January 1275, Jia Saidao deployed 130,000 soldiers to send troops by water. However, as soon as the army reached Wuhu present day Wuhu and Wei province, he proposed peace to Elvi Xiyun, the governor of Jianzhou of the Yuan dynasty, and released the Yuan prisoners to Wuhu to show his sincerity, and sent a lot of lychees and yellow citrus to Biu Yan, the prime minister of the Yuan dynasty, and promised to pay tribute to the minister. Biu Yan refused to negotiate peace with Jia Saidao because of his bad faith and continued to march to Anqing present-day Anqing. Anhui province and Chizhou present-day Giki. Anhui province. Chia Saidao was at his wit's end, so he ordered Sun Haken to let his troops to the station at Dingyuazhou and Xiaojiyuan to let 2,500 warships to lie the river while he led his troops to the station at Lugong south of present-day Wuhu, Anhui province. However, Sun Haken and Xia Yuai were cowardly and abandoned the war. Jia Saidao saw this more panic. The Song army lost the command and collapsed, killed and wounded. Jia Saidao fled to Yangzhou in a small boat that night. After escaping from the danger, Jia Saidao not only did not want to reorganize, but also wrote a letter to the court, suggesting moving the capital and asking the emperor to flee to the sea for refuge. Once again, the proposal was opposed by the Empress Dowager and the courtiers. The Song dynasty was in a precarious state, not only losing many battles, but also spending too much on military pay, resulting in an empty treasury, which was unsustainable. Faced with the imminent collapse of the Song dynasty, Empress Dowager Xi decided to practice austerity by cutting down her daily expenses and ordering the layoff of her palace staff. Jia Saidao's defeat at the port of Lugan humiliated the Song dynasty's national prestige, causing the court ministers to be furious. The privy councillor Chen Yuzhong, who used to be close to Jia Saidao, saw that he had lost his power and wrote a letter to demand that he be punished. However, Empress Dowager Xi tried her best to protect Jia Saidao because he was the brother of the late King Zhuo Guifei and only dismissed him from his official title as the equal of the military and state affairs and the governor of all the armies and horses. Although Jia Saidao's crimes were severe, Empress Dowager Xi punished him lightly, which aroused the discontent of the ministers in the court and the general public. In July, the three forces of the imperial students, the advisers, and the retainers united and petitioned to kill Jia Saidao, but Empress Dowager Xi refused to allow it. At this time, Jia Saidao, seeing the critical situation, also submitted a petition to blame Xi Giyuai and Sun Hakan, begging the Empress Dowager to give him a chance to live. To avoid the surrender frenzy of Jia Saidar's party, Xi Daoqing reduced Jia Saidar's official position to three levels and ordered him to return to Xioxing to mourn for his mother. Jia Saidar had no choice but to return to Xioxing, but the local officials closed the city gates to prevent the traitor from entering the city. In the end, at the strong request of many courtiers, Xi Daoqing had to demote Jia Saidao to the post of regimental trainer of Gaozhou northeast of present-day Gaozhou, Guangdong province, sent him to be imprisoned and resettled, and copied his residences in Linen and Taizhou. In June 1275, a solar eclipse suddenly occurred, 
and the people of the country were talking about it, thinking that it was a bad omen. So Empress Dowager Xi had to cut down the holy blessing I, e, to save the expenses of the royal family to seek the blessing of heaven for the great Song Dynasty. At that time, few officials were left in the court. The prime minister was too old to govern, and Chen Yuzhong and Yu Menjin were so incompetent that they only blamed each other in the court. When General Zhang Shiji was defeated at Jiao Shan, Chen Yuzhong abandoned his post and fled. When Empress Dowager Xi saw no one left in the court, she had to write to Chen Yuzhong and Xi Ji Yue to come to work for the king. But they still needed to obey the order and return. Only a few generals, such as Wen Tiangxiang, a torturer in Jiangxi Province, and Zhang Shiji, a defender of Yingzhou, led their troops to Linen. And there was also part of Huanyin's righteous people who were forced to rebel by the government. At the end of the year, when the Yuan army crossed the Yangtze River. Xi Daoqing knew that the situation was over, so she promoted Zhao Yes, the King of Ji, to be the King of Yi to guard for her. Zhao Hao, the King of Xin, was the King of Guang to guard Quan Zhou. She wanted to preserve the last vestiges of the Zhao family. Soon after, the Yuan army broke through Chengzhou, and Empress Dowager Xi sent Liu Shufu to ask for peace, but she was refused. The Yuan soldiers soon moved into Gating Mountain. Only 30 miles from Linen, Wen Tiangxiang, Zhang Shidi, and others suggested that Empress Dowager Xi move the palace to the sea. They temporarily avoided it for a while. They organized the capital city soldiers and the Yuan army to fight. But Xi Daoqing at this time has been disillusioned, lacking of power to return to heaven. They intend to surrender to the Yuan army. After discussing with Chen Yuzhong, she offered the Jade Seal of State and the surrender form. But Biao Yan was unsatisfied with the Jade Seal and asked Chen Yuzhong, the right Prime Minister, to discuss the matter of surrender. Chen Yuzhong, fearing that Biao Yan would harm him, secretly abandoned the city and fled south that night. Empress Dowager Xi had no choice but to appoint Wen Tiangxiang as the right Prime Minister and ordered him to go to the Yuan camp to discuss surrender with Biao Yan. Wen Tiangxiang was not overbearing; he was righteous. Accused the Yuan army of atrocities and proposed to retreat before negotiating peace. Of course, Biao Yan refused and immediately detained Wen Tiangxiang in the Yuan camp. To avoid letting the capital city of Linen suffer, Empress Dowager Xi Daoqing finally visited the table and asked to surrender. In February of that year, the Yuan soldiers entered Linen without bloodshed, and Emperor Gong and Empress Dowager Xi were captured. To dismantle the remnants of the Southern Song folk resistance to the Yuan, Kublai treated Empress Dowager Xi and Emperor Gong very kindly. First, left her in Hangzhou to recover, and then took her to the capital in August and made her Mrs. Shufeni County. Seven years later, Empress Dowager Xi died in the Yuan Dynasty and was buried in the western suburb of Linhai at 73.